Fair Play, a novel by Pete Fisher. Chapter 6. Blues on the Beach. Martin sat with his old acoustic guitar on the shingle beach near the pier. He watched the waves come in while he played blues using a steel slide. It was summer again. He took his guitar down to the beach at weekends to practice. He also had a blues harp in his pocket, which he was getting quite good on. He learnt by tramping up and down the shingle, blowing riffs that no one else could hear. Martin had the blues. He'd never had a proper girlfriend. He had lots of friends who were girls, but it had never clicked with any of them. Other than the odd drunken snog at parties, he was a rank beginner. He always seemed to get a crush on girls who didn't fancy him. Martin was so absorbed in what he was playing, he didn't hear the scrunch of footsteps on the shingle. A pretty young lady approached. She put her shoulder bag down and sat next to him. Hey, Martin, you were miles away. Martin stopped playing, taken by surprise, pleasantly. Hi, Illy. Don't stop, that sounded really good. I love that slide guitar you do. I'll roll you a cigarette. Martin carried on playing for a minute or two. She took his tobacco tin and rolled them each a cigarette. She lit one and put it in Martin's mouth. Martin couldn't play for long as he started coughing. She laughed and pushed his shoulder playfully. Martin put his guitar down on the stones. So what are you doing here then, Hilly? Oh, you know, Saturday afternoon, window shopping, no one in the cafe. I thought I'd come down to the beach. I knew you might be here. Great, we could go for a coffee. No, let's stay here for a bit. It's so peaceful. You can serenade me. Hilly laughed and lay back on the shingle, smoking her roller. Martin put his down and picked the guitar up again. He went back to the mournful slide guitar riff he'd been practising. Hilly tapped the stones gently in time with the flat of her hand. Hilary, or Hilly, as she preferred to be called, was a few months younger than Martin. Somehow she seemed older, as girls often do. Martin thought she looked a bit like Bridget Bardot. She was certainly very beautiful. She was petite, half a head shorter than Martin. She had grey-blue eyes, a button nose and cute lips. She had gorgeous long fair hair. Her long legs looked great in a miniskirt. Martin had only really got to know her in the last six months. It began when they started bumping into each other in the town centre cafe. All his friends hung out there. They hadn't actually been out together. He'd spent several evenings with her in the old town pub. He always walked her back to her bus stop. Every time he saw her, his heart raced. Martin wasn't sure what Hilly thought of him. It was clear that she liked him. She often said nice things about his guitar playing. But Martin knew she had a boyfriend. At least, he was pretty sure. Hilly and Martin got on really well. He noticed he could make her laugh, that fabulous laugh of hers. It gave him goosebumps. She seemed really at ease with him, maybe because he didn't come on to her. He was too shy. When he asked about the mysterious boyfriend, she clammed up. The house was quiet that Sunday morning. There was no one in. Martin had the place to himself. He plugged his guitar into his new amp and carefully turned the guitar's volume control right down. He switched on the amp and turned it up full for the first time. He hit a ringing chord hard. He gradually turned the guitar up until it began to sustain and scream an octave higher. 
The half-open window rattled in its catch. Two books slid off the end of the shelf and crashed to the floor. The guitar did what Martin felt. Hilly was making him want to scream and throw things. He'd started with an enormous crush on Hilly, but now he'd fallen head over heels. Their romantic rendezvous had become quite a regular thing now. Martin began ringing her most days. Often she'd call back later. On Saturdays, he'd make for the cafe and wait for Hilly. It was September, but still warm enough to sit outside on the pavement and play a bit of guitar. She was always late. Sometimes she didn't turn up at all. When she did, they usually went down to the beach. Martin loved playing for her, and she loved listening. It was a secret little world for both of them. He treasured every minute he could be alone with her. She was glad to be away from gossiping friends. For well over a month, Hilly took over Martin's life. She was using him, but he was so besotted he didn't care. He wasn't stupid. She had a boyfriend called Gaz. It was an on-off thing. She was very highly strung. She often got quite moody and even took it out on Martin sometimes. She poured out her boyfriend problems to him as if he was an agony aunt. He put up with it all patiently trying to be a friend, but yearning desperately to be more. She lived a good half-hour's walk through the park on the other side of town. Sometimes he'd go and pick her up. Wherever they ended up, in the cinema or in an old town pub, Martin would always walk her home afterwards. The goodbye kiss got longer and more passionate. She carried on otherwise as if they were just good friends. Martin steadily got more hurt and confused. He clung on to the hope that she might choose him after all. Martin, it's that woman on the phone again. Whatever do you two find to talk about? Martin's dad got used to fielding her calls. It had been yet another of those crazy days with Hilly. It felt like it had all gone very wrong. She'd been round at his place twice that weekend. They'd sat in his bedroom all afternoon, listening to records. Martin had been in seventh heaven with her there. On the Saturday, they'd been into town to see a Dustin Hoffman film. Hilly said Martin looked a bit like him. Dustin and Bridget. He could live with that. On the Sunday, Hilly had gone home after tea at Martin's. She said she'd be in the Old Town pub about eight. She turned up at nine with Gaz in tow. Martin tried to be friendly, but he was seething inside. To try and kill his pain, he switched to pints of barley wine and bitter. It kicked like a mule. Martin began to feel unwell after three mule kicks. He said goodbye to Hilly and made a beeline for the beach over the road. He squatted down at the water's edge and was violently sick. Then he stomped along the foreshore a little way before turning and heading home. The sea air and the brisk walk helped. He was fine until he opened his bedroom door. Then he saw her coat, still lying on the table. He picked it up and held it to his face. It smelt faintly of her flowery perfume. Martin fell onto his bed clutching it and began to sob. Martin stopped ringing Hilly. Hilly didn't stop ringing him. He did his best to play it cool. One Saturday, they bumped into each other in the cafe. He told her how upset he'd been. She just shrugged. Well, I did warn you. I told you I didn't want to get involved. You should have listened, Martin. 